but just demons. That's what chapter 9 is about. What can demons do? That's our lesson, okay? So let's get a devotional thought about that. When demons are allowed, look at verse 3 of chapter 9. And out of the smoke, these locusts came on the earth, and they were given to them as the scorpions of the earth have power, and they were commanded they can't harm the grass of the earth. They could if they were allowed. They can't. They can't harm green things. They could if they were allowed, but they can't at this point. They can't harm the trees, but they can target Everybody who is not marked by God. You know, there's a great witnessing tool. You want to escape the coming alien invasion? There's only one way you can escape it. Get marked by God in the forehead. But what, when demons are allowed to become predators, they can inflict torture. That's what verses 3 to 6 say. These locusts are demonic creatures John struggles to describe. He uses like Nine times to do so. Like scorpions, they paralyze their victims with pain. Like real scorpions, it can cause a foaming at the mouth and grinding of the teeth. That's, I mean, if you get a full bore scorpion sting, it's horrible. And like real locusts on earth, real locusts have a five-month lifespan from May to September. God limits this judgment to the lifespan of a locust. But, number four... In verse 11, <laughs> the real destroyer is unleashed in a preview of hell. Uh, look at him in verse 11. Uh, they had a king over the, them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. One woe is past. So that whole thing we just saw, this fifth uh, trumpet, is the first woe. But more is coming. Here we meet one of the most powerful demons under Satan called Apollyon and Abaddon that translates destroyer in both languages. That's our English word. There is nowhere to go. There is no escape because there is no secure room to hide from creatures that transcend physical barriers. And this is one of the main reasons why the tribulation is going to be so terrible. But as if these hordes are not bad enough, out of the smoke rises from the pit, in verse 11, the most fearsome monster, their king, Abaddon the destroyer. You know, I think it's interesting that in the video games that, that are so a part of the occultic world, they, they draw a lot of their images from the occultic world, they draw the names. There is video game names. Abaddon, destroyer, and, and terribly other names are involved that are used, and people gaming along don't even think that they are, that the people that have those names are out there, and they're very drawn. Uh, very interesting. But this is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Greek tongue is Apollyon. And both languages capture the creature's name. It means destroyer, but all these demons can only inflict pain. Death is coming, but not quite yet. Uh, we've met the destroyer before, when you read the Bible. I just thought we'd do one drill down about one of these bad guys. Note the power just of the destroyer. We find him in Exodus 12. That should ring a bell. That's the Passover. He's in 2 Samuel 24, called the death angel. He's in 1 Corinthians 10.10. 10. Paul talks about him. And here he is again. What, what did he do just in the first passage? Think of the power of one angel. He was released from the pit by God. He comes as night is falling on the nation of Egypt. God tasks him with only one task. Kill the firstborn human an animal. Okay. In one night, with no mobile DNA center, with no night vision goggles, with no drones humming and satellite coverage, that one angel finds which houses have the blood on the doorpost and he goes right over them. They're marked, just like the angel does in Ezekiel, just like the 144,000, the seven, and all of us are marked. That's why that guy in the hospital didn't like my pastor. The demon in him could see the mark that he belonged to God. Didn't like him. But that angel goes over all the Passover blood-covered houses and permeates every house of the poor people of Egypt and all the way through Pharaoh's court finds the firstborn of man and beast. Wow. In a crowd, have you ever been in a 
in a poorer part. Bonnie and I have spoken all over the world, 60 countries. People take us to their homes. I remember going in one Central American home, and this mud hut had, I counted, 11 hammocks. I mean, they had hammocks crisscrossing every inch from the ceiling to the floor. And 11 people lived in that little tiny place. Can you imagine an angel coming into such a collection of tangled people? And that one angel can instantly identify which is the firstborn and with silently. It says that people didn't, until they woke up and found their child dead, the wailing started all over Egypt. He swiftly, silently identified the firstborn and killed them, not just human. How would you like to go out in the barn and sort between the firstborn of every family of animals? Instantly killed them. This, this is amazing. His name is actually Destroyer, Abaddon, and Apollyon. Well, this brings, look at verse 13 of chapter 9, the next, so that's the fifth, the run-up to the sixth. The sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns, the golden altar before God, saying to the sixth angel, Release the four angels who are bound the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and the day and the month and the year were released to kill. There's the 33%. Now, this second wave is my fifth uh, truth. The greatest loss of human life arrives with trumpet six. Four bound angels allowed by God to lead a demonic army that numbers 200 million horsemen that destroys one-third of all remaining humans. This event is not to be confused with a later human army launched in trumpet seven. See, this is trumpet six. Trumpet seven is led by demons in Revelation 16, 12. It's heading to Jerusalem to fight. See, there's so many people that think that there are 200 million Chinese soldiers crossing the Euphrates. There, it's called not reading the details. This is separate from the seventh trumpet. The seventh trumpet really is all the armies of the earth led by those three frog reptilian demons to go to Armageddon. This is different. This is a demon army. And this demon army is not heading to Jerusalem to fight at Armageddon. This demon army destroys one-third of all remaining humans. Wow. Now do you see what two hours ago I told you? Why did God send the 144,000? Because God is a savior, and before all this stuff breaks loose, he has gotten his uh, spirit-filled, gospel-loving, Bible-believing, hope-filled missionaries to have the greatest harvest of souls. By the way, this, this is sobering. Um, oh, good, we have 15 minutes to do six more slides. Look at chapter 9, verse 20. I wrote in my journal, Sin is far more powerful than we realize. Look at this. The people who have lived through the demon locust, the destroyer, and now the 200 million, uh, you know, killers that are loose, but the rest of mankind who were not killed by the plagues did not repent. They've heard the 144,000. They've seen the, the glowing converts dying. The martyrs are dying. There are countless of them being killed, martyrs, flowing up to the throne of God out of the tribulation. The rest of mankind that have heard from the 144,000, that have seen the glorious conversions, would not repent of the works of their hands. So they should not worship demons. Did you know people worship demons? You know what Paul says in 1 Corinthians? He said, behind every idol is a demon. That means if you go to the parts of the world uh, where, where there are many of these shrines to, to false gods, whatever false gods they are, there are demons behind every idol, behind every shrine. They shouldn't, that they should not worship demons, idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood that can't see nor hear nor walk. But look at verse 21. And they did not repent of their murders or their pharmakeia, their sorceries, their drug-induced demonic contact, or their sexual immorality or their thefts. What I wrote was, sin is far more powerful than we realize. Despite all the horrors, 
all the cataclysms. These people are still chained by their sins of horrible rebellion that only Christ can release us from. Christians should not mess around with sin. We have no idea how powerful it is. I've seen Christians who have been so immense, just totally bound in sin that they, they get to the point where, well, by the way, I, I hear from them all the time because of YouTube. You know, YouTube and COVID made it possible for a lot of people to go online and start searching for the Bible. And I'm hearing from so many of these who say, I have been addicted to, and they can put whatever substance or sex or to alcohol or drugs or to demons or whatever, and they say, I've come to Christ, but it's hard. You know, that's what the Thyatirans, when I showed you, they were on the slide, they were knowing the depths of Satan. There are Christians that know far too much about sin, and they're experiencing the horrors of being so still tempted and beset because they are so used to sin. So sin is horrible, stays far away from his possible.